Hello and welcome to the LEGO Ideas House. My name is Jamie and I'm a creative lead and a senior design manager here at the LEGO Company. And today we are celebrating 15 years of modular buildings and we got a lot to show you. So come along. Welcome. You are in a very special place. This is the vault and it is awesome. This is where we keep all of our Lego products and it's available to Lego designers like myself so we can get inspired, learn from the past, or sometimes just geek out and get lost in our, our memories of our childhood. So I think when we go back to the modulars, we go back to 2007. Oh, so good. It's, I just don't come here enough, but it's so nice to come here. All these sets are so cool. But if you come into 2007, it's that very first year of the modular buildings. And it all started here with the cafe corner. I can't tell you what fans felt back in 2007, walking into a Lego store and being greeted by this. I mean, after years of no buildings to finally get their ultimate dream, I'd like to think <laughs> it was pretty cool. Uh, really neat building but what's special about this box is that it actually has to tell you the entire concept before we have any other buildings and i think we did a pretty okay job you can see the single building here that can be expanded vertically or go side to side but we also have this ultimate version which some of the fans believe it or not actually created and at one of the fan events they made an 18 story version of the cafe quarter just because they were inspired by the picture super cool also see that inspiration building there so much fun stuff but 2007 was an extra special year because you actually got two buildings in that year. The second one we offered was the Lego Factory Market Street building. And you can see it actually looks quite different than the last box. It's under the branding of Lego Factory, which is kind of the early days of Lego ideas, that type of thinking. But so cool again. You can see they've shown the modularity here, but also what Eric came up with that extra spinning where you could make that module fit any way that you want. And it also shows off that digital component on the back. So really different expression, but really great to see. One of the most prized collectible things for the modular collection. But we have a few more gems in here as well. I think if we go back to 2012, we did something really fun that was extra special for our vip members and this is where it gets really tight in here so we're going to squeeze in and there it is pull this out check that out we have the mini modulars if you're a fan of the modular buildings who wouldn't want to have micro super small cute ones and this was something as part of the vip program that we offered in our brand retail stores to our super special uh, special fans and it's just a fun expression to see all those buildings that we've created over the years in those little versions and this is just the first five that's when this came out uh, but I have to say it's just a neat little project whenever you can uh, try to build these little things is just yeah, a little bit of fun so a curiosity in the modular collection and then we come over to 2017 which is the last time that we celebrated our anniversary and by this point, we've started to make this the most anticipated set of the year, where people literally line up January 1st. They want to be the first one coming back to get their modular building. And that is awesome. And there it is, right on the top shelf. Oh, boy. This is a big one. Oh, oh that feels nice to take down. There's the assembly square. And again, we're celebrating 15 years now, but you get our 10-year anniversary there. And again, our biggest modular building ever. You can see we've actually updated the packaging. We're still under the creator branding with the creator expert, but it really just shows off all that storytelling, all of those beautiful details. And you can see that whole street, how it's just grown. I mean, it just bustles with activity. And I'm actually really happy. It's the last modular that I personally worked on and it's still available for sale. So please show your support, show that you remember me. <laughs> <laughs> but have fun to get the assembly square. I think it's a really great build. So now that you've seen the finished products that you could see in the store, let's take a look at how they were created because we've got the whole collection upstairs and it's pretty cool to check out. Welcome to the most special place in the Idea House. This is where we have all 17 of the modular buildings covering 15 years of modular buildings. It's really a fun place to come to. 
And I hope you're comfortable that you can sit down because we do have a few stories to share right now. And it all starts back at the beginning, back in 2007. And this is in my first year working for the Lego company. I had the privilege of working on the cafe corner. And this basically came from ideas from the fan community where they love classic castles and the modularity that we had for classic castles. But they also missed buildings. We hadn't been making buildings for a while. And then we made this set called the Building Bonanza, which was a big success for creator. And just mixing those two ideas of having a creator type house with four walls, a full building, but then also that modularity was extremely appealing to fans. So we made them all into one set. So this is the cafe corner. One thing that you might notice right away is the windows. And that's because these windows in the middle here aren't actually windows, they're walls. And that's because at this time we had made so few buildings, we didn't even have a lot of walls, doors, windows to actually work from. So we had to be creative about it. And I think that kind of rippled for the rest of the line. When you, when you don't have something or you need to brick build something or be creative, it creates really fun results. And that started with this one. You might also notice because we had that lack of windows, this is the only modular, the first modular, of course, but the only modular where we really took advantage of having a double thick wall. And that means when you look inside the building, there's actually a different color on the inside than there is to the outside. And that's where we kind of took something you might think is missing, but actually made it a plus where now you got to enjoy something you don't normally get to see in a Lego building. But as with all the modular buildings, it's all about the brick building. So many little details. We didn't want to just decorate or print things. We wanted to build them. So we have the hotel sign here, which is all brick built lettering. We really took it to heart to try to show off what the bricks could do and what they could accomplish, taking skis and making them a detail, taking frogs or parrots and making them a detail. And you'll find that throughout the line, we love taking elements that you think are for one thing and then twisting it and making it for something else. So this is the very beginning. So I have a very special, I have a soft spot for this because it's right at the beginning. Now, wouldn't you know, right when we made this, before it even launched, we had a Lego fan come in who got to work with us as part of the Lego factory project. It's kind of the predecessor of Lego ideas. And yet we actually had a fan there that saw this and fell in love and said, I need to make one of those. So even before it launched, we had a Lego fan named Eric Brock that came in and he made Market Street. And I don't want to understate how impressive what he accomplished was. But in just a week of being with us, he came up with the full sketch. It was originally in white. And then overnight, he made it this dark red color. And it was gorgeous. And we said, we have to make that as a product. But of course, we just did a dark red building. And we were about to do the fire brigade, which we already knew we wanted to do. So we decided on a blue color to help it stand out. But Eric had some really clever ideas. He loved the idea of the modularity. And he took it even further. He said, what about if you actually made these units where they were square and he put a centralized staircase so that way you could turn this any way that you wanted and it would always align with the floor below. And that way you can make the front of the buildings, the back of the buildings. You could actually put this off to the side and have a balcony there. And that's for all the different levels. He made it so that way you can reconfigure this with a simple twist of the building and make it however you want. I thought that was really fresh. You also might notice that these are the only figures in the early years that have expressive faces. And that was also something that Eric really liked and that he said, oh, I have these characters in mind that I wanted to add to the building. But at that time, we had already set the standard <laughs> where we had these classic smileys to make them generic, that they can be whatever you want to be, just like we talked about those frogs and animals. But to take, um, take his wishes into account, we stuck with the, smile, the, the extra faces. And it really makes it stand out now as a special modular that we have a really, really uh, fond relationship with. But still all those clever building techniques, neat little staircases. On his original, he had an octopus, but we changed it out with an owl and some whips, making a really nice little wrought iron detail. And again, it's really using animals in ways that you weren't expecting and helping them come to life in other ways. If we go to the third modular building, which was originally supposed to be the second modular building, we have the green grocer. And when I say second and original and third, it's because when we first came up with the idea for the modular buildings, we thought it was going to be three buildings, cafe corner, green grocer, and the fire brigade. And that's what we said, and that's what we were planning. And who knew it would still be going all these years? But that's why there was actually a lot of thought on the entire street, even before we got to the further buildings. But on the green grocer, this one was particularly difficult because I had to now, having worked on the cafe corner, 
what is the next one that's even better than the Cafe Corner? Because I was working on this while the Cafe Corner had already released and everybody was talking about the Cafe Corner and they had high expectations. And all of a sudden, everybody had an opinion too. <laughs> so I started with an originally symmetrical building where there were actually two towers here. And then through conversations, it evolved into this really nice asymmetrical building. And there's lots of fun details here. We've got, for the first time, we're trying to add interior details, which the earlier building didn't have. So we've got a little radiator and we've got a, a clock. Um, but we're also having a lot of fun with things like the hammers here, where we start to discover these curious relationships with the bricks, where you take a skeleton leg, you put a hammer in it, and then if you repeat it enough times, it fools the eye and it starts to look like a detail. And that's, again, something we love to do. You can also see how the windows have started to come into the system because now that we knew we wanted to do these, we're introducing new things like these, these new taller doors and then also uh, some of these other windows that now are giving us more options going forward. But you might still notice we still have a train window here. So we're not fully there yet, but you can see that we're planting the seeds for the entire line. One other thing that's special about this one is it has a, a nice back detail. We have a fire escape on the back and that's because we really wanted to create a full experience. And that's tricky with LEGO models because they're often an open back where you have all that access to the play. But for these, we wanted to replicate reality and we wanted to people to embrace them in their setup, their home, their displays, uh, and give them that full detail so that way they have lots of opportunities to ask people to come in closer, take a look around, and see all of those great details. And then we have the Fire Brigade, what was originally supposed to be the third, but is now the fourth building in the lineup. We wanted to try some very new things here. First of all, you might notice it's the first modular to actually only have two floors. It separates here and it has that larger lower floor and then it has the upper floor with the activity for the firefighters. On that ground floor, what it allows is for this first vehicle, our first fire engine, first vehicle on the lineup. And that's a really fun detail to add because now you have mobility to go across the street and it speaks to that street scene that we're trying to create. We had a lot of fun with this one with some of the building elements. We tried to build brick built numbering and not just numbering but special numbering because this one has very special meaning for us at the lego company because it's the very beginning of the lego company and this year we're not only celebrating 15 years of modular building we're celebrating 90 years of the lego company so it's actually a double win for us but you can see just above that lettering we've got this beautiful gold bell it's actually a little bit of a hint to my fan years. I got hired into the company as a Lego fan, and this bell is inspired by a bell that I created with my fellow Lego fans for a milliard project in Manchester, New Hampshire. So I can't help but bring my fan ways in sometimes, and that's where it landed there. But you can see really different expression. We've tried to also make sure that the street didn't feel too European, too American, too anywhere in the world. We're trying to do a mix of artistic styles and architectural styles, so that way it's really anywhere that you want it to be. But again, a very fresh expression, something very different on the line up here. One last note about it is this the first time I actually started adding little details of my own life there, where this is actually my sister and her husband, and he works at a firehouse, and you can't help but be inspired by the world around you, and it somehow made it into the model. If we move on to the next one, we've got the Grand Emporium here. And this is now the first time we're having to do a corner unit again. And back with the Cafe Corner, we really took that to heart to try to think of how people could not only connect this model with the other models, but even within itself, how could you expand that building on its own? And what better building to expand than a shop, some sort of a grand emporium? If you think of any of the major cities, they often have these large retail stores. And if you were to connect multiples of these, you could not only expand it vertically like all the other modulars, but this one works really well to create a square. And you could just make this massive tower of a building, which is super inspiring if you get a chance to do it. But like the other modular buildings, really fun building techniques here. We tried to do some clever lettering here on the front. We've got some nice pattern work here, uh, but we're also taking advantage of some of the newest elements in the Lego assortment. And just under here, this little arch was coming out in another product line, and we knew that the fans were gonna want to have it. So whenever we see an appealing element the fans want, we give a ton of them. So that's actually the inspiration for the entire upper part of this building was simply to give fans a whole bunch of a part we knew they were gonna love. Um, but a great building, also our first time that we did an escalator, trying to break up the mold a little bit, where we wanna make sure that we're always offering something new and something fresh, so that way, when you get a modular building, you know you're in for a treat. From this model, this is actually starting in this display to not necessarily go chronologically, but it's starting to, to show how some people might want to display them in their own house. And so we have here the Palace Cinema. 
The Palace Cinema is a, a nice combination of two designers. We had our designer Astrid and our intern Jordan work together on it. And having worked on many of these with a full team of people, we always have a team behind us, but having two people that are driving it was quite interesting because this evolved quite a bit as a concept but we love where it landed. It's a really fresh take on the street. You've got a place for the minifigures to go, a nice little cinema scene, and some gorgeous details here. It's really showing like the, the glory days of Hollywood, where you would just go out to the theater like it was a big occasion. So we're really trying to play that up here with this beautiful uh, entryway here. We've got the fanfare lights, kind of bringing some of the modular details out onto the street. We've also got the car again, and we've got some celebrity figures here going to the grand premiere. And you might also notice this one in particular has a red base plate, which you can see a little bit here on the edging. And that's one more thing about the modular buildings is that a lot of them have very different colored base plates. And that's because it's one of the few places in the company you can actually get base plates. So we said, hey, why don't we at least do them in different colors so people can make what they want? And it's just one more of those things that the fans have grown to appreciate and love is that extra layer of detail where we're trying to give them those pieces that hopefully spark creativity where they can make their own things later on. But just a very different expression, really clever brick-built lettering. We're getting a little bit artistic now <laughs> with our lettering. We're starting to add uh, Technic bricks into the mix. And then otherwise, we're also um, taking advantage of, for the first time, stickers, which is hugely controversial. But we just wanted those posters on the window that really get the storytelling uh, to come to life and also to have it on the big screen. But we also learned with this one that the fans really don't appreciate stickers within the modular line. So it's, only, it's the only modular building that has stickers. So it's also special in that regard. When we move over to the pet shop, the pet shop is a really fun experiment because we said, what happens if you take all of these square buildings? They all have a very similar footprint. And what happens if you go with a half building? And we got inspired by this all the way back in the cafe corner where, believe it or not, the Cafe Corner had a B model. We had an inspiration model on the box that said, hey, if you rebuild this into another building, you can make this half building. We never provided instructions for it. Some clever fans have figured out how to build it retroactively. But we said, well, because we didn't give them instructions, we can at least give them a building that we do show them how to enjoy, and that's the pet shop. These are two buildings. You can arrange them any way that you want. Like all our modulars, they're still expandable. You can actually add additional sections in either way. Um, but it's also just a, a nice, fresh approach to the street, trying to break up that square. Again, we've got our brick-built lettering. That building that I talked about on the cafe corner, it's actually represented kind of here. It's the same detail that you would have seen on the back of the box there, and we've built it again here, now giving you a building in its full potential. We also started to introduce a lot more of those interior stories. There's a, a nice little moving in scene here where we have a paint roller where they're trying to paint like they're just, just moving into the place. Uh, but we also know that pets have been extremely important as building details in the whole lineup. But on this one, we said, hey, why don't we just celebrate pets in general because people love how we're using them. What if they were just pets? It's just more characters on the street, and it also brings them more mischief, more curious stories where animals get in everywhere, and that's what we love because we're giving them lots of places to get lost. Moving on to the Town Hall, the most grand, tallest modular buildings of all. This is also an Astrid creation where she's now kind of mastered her craft, where she's gotten familiar with the modular buildings and she's making something that is really, really impressive. It has a special surprise on the inside. We stepped away from the staircases because this is a municipal building and we introduced an elevator. And if you've ever tried making a, an elevator that's modular, that you can keep expanding as high as you want, it's a really tough challenge. But I think Astrid came up with a clever solution where what she did is she made it so that way it would lock on the different floors and the, the elevator shaft could be expanded. And it's just a really fun building detail that I think people really enjoyed when they saw it. It's also the first time that we introduced decorations that are unique to the modular buildings. As I talked about, we've been very proud of doing this brick-built lettering, which Astrid is still doing here. But she also said, hey, you know, why don't we tell a wedding story? You're at the town hall. That would be really great to have a bride. And at the time, we didn't have any minifigures that could act as a bride. And so she did that, that little decoration there. But then she also had a little bit of playful fun. Uh, we're living here in Bill in Denmark. That's where the idea house is right here. And so she decided to represent this little shield for the town and make this almost the Billund Town Hall because that is inspired by the crest of Billund. So if you ever come here, you look at that shield, it might seem familiar. You can't help but be inspired, like I said, with your surroundings. Otherwise, lots of great building te techniques. Biggest building ever. 
uh, up until this point and a really fresh look on the on the street scene when we move over this way this almost starts what some of the fans are calling like the the second generation of modular buildings and it actually started a little bit earlier with the uh, Parisian restaurant but you can still see other buildings that came after it here um, and the reason I say second generation is because when you're looking at this lineup even when we did the pet shop a lot of the buildings are very uh, grid like there there's still some variation of a box or some sort of a boxy form but once we got to the these later years we started to really be more playful with that layout and you can see that here where we're cutting away lots of different areas we're actually making one building look like several buildings so we're giving you a very busy street scene within a smaller context and this one has some really really fun stories as well Again, considering we started with an empty building at the beginning, this one is the full show. We almost went too far because we have this cookie smuggling story on the inside. And that caused us to really have fun with all of these little secret passageways where you can move a barrel of cookies from under the stairs where the staircase moves and you can pull it out in the different parlor here. And it's just a really playful and imaginative way to, yeah, tell a story. Also a slightly absurd story because we're just smuggling cookies. One thing you might not know is what inspires a cookie smuggling story. Well, at the time, the Lego company was actually trying to encourage us as, a, as their colleagues and employees to eat healthier, and they were trying to introduce lots of healthy measures. And when you have a lot of mischievous designers, we can't help but counter, <laughs> counter react to that and say, I like my cookies too. So we put them in the modular building where we could get them. Um, some nice decorations here again. You can see this on the front, it says the Highlander. That's actually uh, loosely based on a place that was downtown that unfortunately has been uh, knocked down since then. But again, we can't help but take some of our private life and our home life and our work life and then bring it into the modular buildings. But still using some clever building techniques, we're introducing Technic bricks and Bionicle bricks, uh, really in a different way this time. We, we traditionally have used many of the, the normal traditional building bricks or minifigure accessories. But for this one, these are actually bionicle fists. They're the hands of a bionicle robot. And then for this water tower, we were using tank treads or, or like caterpillar treads type on, on, a, on a digger, an excavator tread. Uh, and then we actually found that it connects really well with these one by three tiles. And we create this beautiful rounded expression, which is just around a gear. So I think when you're trying to dig into how some of these things are crafted, using a, using a unikitty tail from the Lego movie, um, again, more brick-built lettering. It's hopefully something that you really just get lost in and enjoy all of those addition, additional stories, but also little building details. Then we have here the uh, brick bank. Um, brick bank is yet another corner. And we started to realize that with our previous three corners that we were always placing the door on the corner, right on the edge there. And we said, hey, what happens if we orient the building so that way it's no longer putting a door on the front, but we can actually have it so that way, again, it's a busy street scene. So you've got the bank on this side, but then you've got a laundromat on that side. And that's also where we had maybe a little bit of mischief and fun, because when you're making these models for adults or teens or super fans, you can start to tell stories that maybe don't make as much sense for the younger kids in a city context or friends. Um, so we started to talk about uh, the bank and we have a vault that you can break into which feels very familiar with city But the connection with the laundromat you can actually put money through the laundry machines into the vault and take them out And we have these little passageways where you can have a figure that goes down the back It was just really fun to think through all of these clever little twists But we we're also taking some cues from previous modular buildings that didn't quite work and we're bringing them forward This little detail here was originally designed to go on the fire brigade but like most of our creations, there's only so much that you can put in and you need to be patient and then use it at another time. So this is what I like to call one of my misfit creations that finally had a place because you never want to force something into a building just because it's clever. You want to make sure that it belongs there and that the building invites it. So just having this little detail here, a nice little blast from the past, but then balancing it with using these uh, elves key. We had an elves line for a little while there. We've got these little keys. It really starts to make for a beautiful pattern that you might expect on a beautiful bank of this stature or this size. But speaking of banks, again, our own inspiration, those glass windows on the base there, they're also reminiscent of a federal bank that I had in the, the town where I lived for many years. And so again, it's uh, inspired by that. It just made me happy when I would walk by on the street to see this beautiful stained glass on an old building. And so we tried to capture some of that here in a nice decoration, but then also with a brick built version of it just above that carries that nice green and transparent color. So again, lots of fun stories. We're also trying to take characters 
and twist their roles. You know, we're, we're kind of used to the, the superhero and then the potentially the, the damsel in distress, and, and we don't want any of that. We want all of our characters to be curious. We want them to be empowered. And so on this one, for example, we have a, a beautiful, loving mom and her daughter, and she's actually the one that's trying to break into the vault. So just again, trying to twist how you might perceive you know, the reality, we give it a little bit of a, a twist. So just something fun there. When we move over to this way, this is actually one of our more recent buildings, uh, which this is the corner garage. The corner garage is yet another corner, but again, you can see how we're really trying to do something different with each of our corners. We've returned a little bit more to making sure that there, it presents well on the front, but we've given it all of that facing. We've really tried to cut this away and give a beautiful angle uh, facade here. And a lot of this is actually using some clever building going sideways. So we have train windows here that are going sideways. We have this long window here that's also going sideways, and it's just a fun, geometric exploration like we have a lot of people in our team that love geometry they love triangles and they're very clever with it so coming together as a team we were able to create this very different layout and different profile but yet it also gives you a place to fix some of the vehicles that we've had on the street and we've made sure that all of the vehicles that came before this model fit inside that garage so they can all be repaired and we've also got a little bit of functionality where you can actually uh, push the, uh, the the you can push the car up and down on the lift uh, we also had some fun with trying to do this garage door on the front. And traditionally, our garage doors, you just manually move them up and then they slide over. But because we had cars going up and down, we didn't have any ceiling space where we could put a car that wouldn't just hit the door. So instead, we had to be clever and we decided to do a roller door. And I can't tell you how many iterations we had to do to get it to where it is, but it's actually really nice and fun that you can still get a garage door that now you can control up and down but it also gives you that space for the vehicle inside. So a really fresh expression of a building, but also some nice surprises as well. This might also be a moment that I can start to talk about the trees, where the tree on this one is also a very curious construction. And you might notice that this tree versus the brick bank tree versus some of the other ones going down the line, it's one of those areas that we really like to have fun with and try to introduce new ways of building trees and greenery and different types of foliage. The nice thing is that we always have the consistent light post. That actually goes way back to the 1970s, I think, from Fabuland. So this is a beautiful old element that we've been able to keep alive, but then we still want to keep that sidewalk fresh with new patterns, and we have new trees and new all kinds of things. The buildings are going in and out, so it really feels dynamic and alive. And that definitely gets celebrated the most when you get to this building because you see all of that sidewalk really becoming an important part of the story because it's a, it's a gas station where you want to be able to repair cars. Then we go over to this one. This is the Parisian restaurant. This one I have a personal soft spot for because it's the first time I came back to building modular buildings after Astrid had worked on a few and I was sparking. I had all kinds of ideas of things that I wanted to do. And the first one is I wanted to break that box construction that we were talking about. So it's the first time that we actually see the side of a modular building where it's actually detailed. Usually the sides of these buildings get pushed up against another one, so we're not quite as concerned about how they look. But this one I wanted to be very deliberate on making sure we had a nice chimney, nice detailing there, and really was just inspired to try to create one of these old world, really beautiful, rich buildings. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just something that makes me happy. Um, it's also because there's a lot of storytelling from my own family here. My brother getting engaged is in the story. My mom and dad had a family restaurant growing up. So those little bits are all kind of represented in here on one level or another, even down to the sign where we have Shea Albert. My dad's uh, middle name is Albert, but also my grandfather. So there's just nice levels of depth there. But as a building experience, it's also really fun. We got to do uh, a pull down bed, like a little hidden features on the inside. We also got to use Again, our animal parts we love, but we also got to use our food parts, these little croissants and this little clamshell here to create these nice little details that get framed with these wheel arches that just really make an elegant expression, but also with pieces you might not express. And it's one of those things, again, that ties back to the green grocer, where this was originally an owl in the middle, and it was one of those central iconic pieces between the two towers. But when we shifted away and went asymmetrical, didn't fit in. But look at all these years later, we were able to pull it forward put it in this building and really celebrate it for a nice building technique. Uh, beyond that, it's also got an unusual color. You might notice that many of our modular buildings introduce bricks that you don't normally get in volume 
in the normal Lego assortment. Between the sand blue windows here, we've got this nice uh, olive green for this color. Um, it's just an opportunity that we want to give fans some of those uh, colors and bricks and standard bricks that they can then make into their own creations again. Curious story, by the way, I've never been to Paris, made a Parisian restaurant. First time I went to Paris, I realized most of the buildings are tan, they weren't olive green. So you live and learn. Sometimes my imagination gets away from me, but uh, that's also what's nice is this is not a Parisian building as much as it's a building of the world, because if you go to Paris, I know you're gonna see lots of tan. But anyways, still a fun building. Then we get to this building, which is our anniversary building for the 10th anniversary. And so this building is a celebration of all the buildings that came before it. And it has many of those cues from the previous building. You can see the awnings and the, the little coffee cup here from the cafe corner. Uh, but then it also has some familiar details from either the pet shop or we have uh, some of the sand green from the uh, green grocer. We have that detailing from the Grand Emporium. So what, what, whenever you're looking at this, you're just seeing those little hints of buildings past, but in a new way. There's a new expression, there's new things to discover, new building techniques, and some really fun stuff here. But it's also the first modular building that goes beyond the base plate. It's actually a base plate and a half. So this is our widest, longest modular building of the entire collection, even to this date. And uh, it's, it's allowing us to tell a lot of fun stories. You'll actually see characters pulling from the previous ones. So if we have a photographer that's at the town hall, this is the photography studio. We have some of the musicians from previous stories that now have a music studio or a dance studio. We have a bakery, so when you know that there's some cakes or things being delivered down the road, this is where it comes from. And we're really trying to create that synergy that every story links to another and it fills out the entire street scene just like you would have in real life. But again, really fun building techniques. You can tell we love these garage doors. We've used them for the skylight on the town hall. Now we're trying to use them sideways here. Uh, I also got to work on friend's house, the Olivia's house, and I made a little uh, shower door. So clearly we love to use these garage door pieces in unusual ways. And this is just one more expression of that. But again, also celebrating those brick built signs, like we're using the roses here, not doing lettering, but trying to actually show signage in a different way, but then still having nice decorated prints on the window where we have the dentist decoration with also a little bit of humor uh, referencing uh, yellowing of teeth, which also some of our older white bricks, you might notice have that, uh, that warm glow from the past, which we, we kind of make a, a gentle reference to there. Um, one last thing to mention here is also those surprising uses of ele elements, things like the shovels here. Those are actually Technic excavator shovels. I'm a big fan of Technic. I have Technic on my mind quite a lot. It's really fun when you actually can take something from a universe like Technic and then bring it into a beautiful street scene, uh, but hopefully not distract, but actually add more to that. So lots of great fun stories to discover here. When we move over to the diner, uh, this is a great creation from Mike Psyche. Up until this point, you might know him from many of his vehicles, his cars. He's done some really amazing work. But uh, this is his chance to show off his cleverness in making a modular building. And of course, just like most of Mike's other models, he can't just stack bricks without celebrating them being twisted and flipped in every direction. So he's really tried to push our lettering to a whole new level. These are the first freestanding letters that we have in the lineup. Uh, we also have walls that are built sideways um, instead of just stacking the bricks. And that allows very subtle details like little, little movements back and forth uh, on the windows that again, only Mike in his amazing mind could create. But he's also taking the storyline to a different place. We've, we were at this point thinking, okay, many of these buildings feel very old world first half of last century. What happens if we go to the middle of the century? There's a lot of fun storytelling there with this nice art deco styling. And he's really done a great job of maintaining some of the old world where we're trying to tie this into the rest of the lineup, but they're still giving that, that fresh look. And it's these gorgeous clean lines that he's created that just wrap around. Everything is just beautiful lines flowing in every direction. And that goes down to the window detail below, but he didn't lose sight of the humor either. So we have a boxing ring in there where we have this very flamboyant boxer uh, with an actual working boxing, uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but the hanging boxing thing. You can tell I'm a big boxer. Um, but otherwise, he's, he's also really elevating our cars as well, where you can see just how gorgeous that is. Knowing that he's a car guy, he couldn't help himself but uh, raise the game or raise the bar for our, our vehicles. Um, so a really clever building techniques here, uh, but also nice to see Mike uh, getting to try buildings for a change, uh, knowing that he's so talented in so many ways. 
Speaking of new talents into our team, we also have the, uh, the beautiful Birch Books here, the bookshop. And uh, this was done by Wes, and he's somebody we've been really looking forward to having on our team for quite a while. He's known in the past for doing many of these elves creations, really beautiful, fantastic creations. And he started this idea of the modular building in a typical West way that it started with a tree. <laughs> I don't know any other people that started the buildings that worked on this starting with a tree, but that was Wes's inspiration. And it's a gorgeous tree, and it just adds all of that life, that color. It changes the seasons of the whole street but still belongs perfectly with all the other buildings. So after he got the tree uh, successfully created, he of course wanted to call it Birch Books, and uh, that's the uh, reference for the name. But he's also got a little house here that, like our other designers and myself, he's tried to put a little bit of his own personal story in there. So his parents are represented in here and other people that are meaningful in his life. And he's got that number 107 on the, uh, the front there. I don't know if you can see the decoration, but that represents this color because Wes was also very instrumental in bringing back teal. Again, this is a very fan thing, but if you didn't know, the color teal, which is also represented here, uh, that actually disappeared for a while. And Wes was a really strong advocate to bring it back. And we successfully relaunched it in the, uh, the diner here, but then Wes really took it to the next level by making the whole building in that teal color uh, and then celebrated the number of the house as 107, which is our internal color for teal. Um, one other thing that's really clever here is that Wes tried something very different on how the buildings separate. So when you actually take the top floor, traditionally the roof would come off, but Wes actually said, hey, what happens if you were to actually split part of the back of the building? Then you get a lot more access to that interior detail. So I think it's really clever that even with something that's been done for so long, there's still opportunities to try to surprise people with something new. And then of course those animals that have crept in along the way, he's got a beautiful little uh, gecko here, but then that is the perfect color to match the bed. And then we have this nice little scene where it's trying to hide on the bedspread and it matches that color of teal, which once again, Wes is really, really excited by. And then he makes the gecko the same, same color for that, or sorry, chameleon. I call it a gecko, chameleon, but anyways. Uh, yeah, so cool stuff there. And then we move down to one of our more recent buildings, which is the police station. And we've hinted at this story for quite a while. We had Al's Barber Shop, where you have a policewoman getting her hair cut. And we otherwise have a pretty happy street, where this is a place where not too much bad stuff goes on. Or if it does, it's in a very weird twist that you're smuggling cookies or something. So the police department is pretty casual. They also are very comfortable eating their donuts <laughs> as much as there's a cookie. Uh, shortage or we're trying to uh, protect people from having too many sweets, uh, they can't help themselves but uh, get a few of these tasty treats along the way. Um, it's one of those uh, buildings that belongs at every street scene. I mean, there's usually fire station, police station. Uh, so we definitely knew we wanted to get there. It just took a little while to finally have the right person and the right model to do, and that was Chris, and he just did a wonderful job here. He's again celebrating the usage of the elements. Uh, the elements on the top here are actually from Minecraft where we're able to use an undecorated element as a building detail, some really nice things there. But then Chris also not only made a complete, wonderfully active street scene, but then he also made it so that way inside there's a little jail where you can remove a part of the floor and there's a little tunnel going out where a person is trying to dig out of that jail. So in some ways, they are kind of similar stories that you might see in one of your police stations as a child if we're Lego City. But now we're adults, but we still remember those things and we want to see a new execution of it and really kind of fondly bring, bring back our childhood memories. But a really great building. We also have some signage here that connects with some of the previous stories. Let's see if I can take that off. Or you can have this soap and suds. And what's great about this is it's celebrating actually the mom who was breaking into the bank is actually shown here uh, with a little bit of a wink. Like she knows what she's doing in order to get into it. And she's quite clever and savvy as a business person, but also is so confident in her abilities of not getting caught that she buys a billboard to place right on the side of the police station, just to remind them that they're never gonna catch her because she's just too clever. Uh, so I think there's some fun humor there as well. And then we land on our final modular building, which is the one that's currently out today. And that is our beautiful boutique hotel. And Andy has just done an amazing job with this. I think what it does is it takes all of the learnings of the previous modular buildings and just elevates them even further. The playful geometry that we've enjoyed in some of the other buildings is just all over the place. Everything is just at different angles. 
um, and it really gives a dynamic street scene. You've got the main building, but then you've got little sub-stories, lots of activities. We've also got some beautiful coloring here, where this color here, you might notice, is usually used for minifigure faces and hands. Uh, it's actually a color we tried on the pet shop, but when we had it on the pet shop, it was just too much. When you looked at it, it just felt too strong. But Andy managed to create a great balance here where he's sandwiching it between that sand green and the nice nougat color below. And for the first time, we get to use a color we really wanted to use. And it just softens this whole street scene and really makes it just so beautiful. Uh, but again, clever building techniques. He's got these nice little uh, snakes on the top from Ninjago. On the inside, he's actually got a little typewriter that he made with a decoration. And that's actually connected with the LEGO Ideas team because he just loves that typewriter so much he made a little decoration to try to bring it into the set. So it's just wonderful to see that we've now had 15 years. We've got 17 buildings, so many designers working on these. When you see the whole street come together, I hope you just see how much thought and love and excitement and playfulness has just come into this and yet they all belong. It's an entire team of buildings made from a team of designers that just love what they're doing and would love to make these until the end of time. So we're here at 15 years. Let's hope for another 15 to go, maybe even more. Happy anniversary modular buildings.